Okay, so uh, we're calculating the the value, you know, the amount, the dollar amount of your debt after t months. Okay, and we'll call call that amount uh, p sub t uh, here, here, p sub t. And you're given a formula. Now this is just thrown at you, right? Here's here's the formula that you're given uh, of the amount of debt that you have after t, t months, t uh, obviously an integer, right? So it, it uh, here, here you have a, a theorem statement, if you like, um, that uh, the debt after t months is this amount, okay? P is the principal, you know, you're, you're the amount that you borrowed in the first place, M is your uh, monthly uh, interest multiplication factor, you know, one plus I over 12, right? Uh, T or you know, number of months. Uh, y is the constant monthly mortgage payment that you pay to the bank or mortgage company uh, e you know, each month, right? And you have this formula. So um, the exercise now uh, is to use proof by induction to prove this formula, okay? So you know, we'll use the two steps, uh, basis step and the inductive step, to show that this formula is actually correct. Okay. So now uh, the basis step. Um, well, actually, we don't have to start at, z at one. We can start at zero. Uh, do, do you see the starting integer doesn't really matter much? I mean, you can start at uh, I don't know um, b. Yeah, some integer, positive integer b, you could start at b and then uh, because if it's true for b, if you can prove, if your basis uh, step is proving that it's true for integer b, well then your next uh, step, you know, your inductive step, would show that it's true for b plus 1 and, and then true, true for b plus 2 and so on. So if you, if you start at 0, then you'll Base um, your inductive step would show it's true for zero, it's true for one. And if it's true for one, it's true for two. And so, on. so the actual uh, starting position, you know, the, your initial integer in the basis step, doesn't really matter much. Okay. So let, let's start at zero. So um, the the basis step um, at t is zero. So so when t is zero, the t goes zero here. So p of naught. Now, what, what should that be, just for common sense? You've made, you know, you've made no payments yet, uh, so what's your debt? Well, just the principal, right? Because uh, you, you, uh, you borrow uh, the money at the beginning of your first month, at time, you know, t is zero, so that your debt then is just p, the principal. And at the end of the month, you then have to pay one month's interest and uh, you make a payment. So, uh, so P naught should be P. Now, is that, that that's what common sense says. Uh, that, so now we test the formula. Is the formula true? And in other words, is, does this formula when T is naught does it equal P? We need to test for that. Yeah, this, this this is the basis step pro proving that that's true. Well, is it? Uh, so let T be zero. So M M to the zero. Well, here. M to the zero, M, M to the zero is just one, so you just look at P, okay? M to the zero is one, so one minus one, it's zero. So all this, all this term here drops out. M to naught is just one, okay? This drops out, so you just look at P. So P naught is P. So the f according to the formula, uh, the formula, the formula is correct because it gives you the same value as uh, common sense, okay? So the formula works. So the basis step is correct. All right, now uh, the, induc the induction step, yeah, um, so we'll use the inductive hypothesis, we'll assume that this formula here is true for a general K, uh, yeah, after, after K months. So we, we will use this formula where T is now K. Okay? So we'll assume that the formula for PK you know, the size of your debt, DBT debt, after K months is this. Right? You're just plugging in K for T here. 
Right? So we assume that that formula is true. All right, now what do we have to do? We have to show um, if it's true for k, we now have to show that it's true for k plus 1. Uh, well, according to the formula uh, for k plus 1, your t here will be k plus 1. So you put k plus 1 here and here. So this, this is what you're trying to show, that it's equal to this. Okay? Your, your debt after k plus 1 months. So uh, we have to show that this is true uh, using some other way. Well, um, so this is this is the debt one month after k yeah, after k plus one months. Well, um, now we assume we know what the debt is after k months. That's this formula. That that was the inductive hypothesis. Right? So we have we 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 assume we know what the, what this is. Now whatever it is. Uh, a month later, uh, due to the interest payment, um, you multiply by your interest uh, factor, monthly multiplication factor, uh, m, which will be 1 plus i divided by 12. Okay. So uh, this is, this is your, the debt you had the previous month, yeah, after k months. You multiply it by this uh, interest multiplying monthly factor, m. Uh, so that will increase the size of your debt, and then the, that you know, that result you you subtract from it your monthly payment, right? Because th that will lower your debt because you, you know you're paying back the bank or the mortgage company um, a fixed amount every month. Why? Okay. So this is what your uh, debt should be after k plus one months. It'll be m times p k minus y. All right? Now we have a formula for p of k, it's, it's this. Right? So we just plug this into pk here, multiply it by m, and subtract y, and hopefully the result we will get will be this. Because what's this? This is, this is uh, the p of k plus 1, the, the debt after k plus 1 months, according to the formula. So if this, now this is, uh, this is not using the formula, well, except for that. This, this is more just sort of uh, common sense, right? So if the result we get for this equals this, then our formula for this case, k plus 1, when t is k plus 1, is correct, right? So let's... Uh, Let's actually plug in, what do we, we'll plug in this formula here, for here. We'll multiply all this by m, subtract y, and hopefully the result we'll, we get will be equal to this. Right? That's, that's what we're heading towards. Two chairs. Okay, so now I'll actually do it. So p, k plus 1. Now here's the formula for p, k. Okay, just plug it in, uh, multiply by y, uh, sorry, m, m, you know, the monthly multiplying factor uh, with the interests, you know, it increases the debt due to the interest uh, payment, and then and the debt will go down because you've made uh, each month your monthly uh, mortgage payment, uh, y, y dollars, right? Okay, so uh, the m here, so it'll go k plus 1, that's where this comes from, um, minus 4, so you got an m here, so you get m to the, yeah, m to k plus 1, minus m, right? and minus y. Now, uh, if you multiply above and below by m minus 1, it doesn't change anything, right? Because this in brackets is just 1. So multiplied by y, multiplied y by 1 doesn't change anything. But uh, it's convenient to do this because now you've got m minus 1 underneath in both, both these terms. Right? So bring the m minus 1 underneath here. So you'll get m k plus you know, y outside, minus y outside. So you get m k plus 1 and, uh, and you've got minus minus, so you'll have y m. Plus, you know, plus y m 
and from here uh, a minus y m. So those two terms cancel, okay? and so this disappears, that disappears, and all, what you're left with then is uh, minus y times minus 1.